Hi all and welcome to Miss Robbie's classroom. I'm your teacher, Miss Robbie, and today we will have another topic on the self-learning modules for Science 9. For this clip, you will need your Science 9 Module 6, your activity notebook, and a pen. Pay attention when you hear the bell sound. That means you may need to pause the video in order to do the task given. Then resume the video once you're done. And don't forget to practice honor and honesty in answering your modules. So after going through this module, you're expected to differentiate basic features and importance of photosynthesis and respiration, describe plant structures that enable a plant to make food, identify raw materials needed for photosynthesis, and describe the process of food making in plants. So with that, let's talk about Module 6, Photosynthesis. Before we go on, let's find out what you know about the topic. Go to page 3 to 5, What I Know. Read carefully each item. Write only the letter of the best answer for each question. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Nike number 1. Plants make food by absorbing water and carbon dioxide. Which of the following substances is the origin of oxygen released as a gas by green plants during photosynthesis? Is it A. Carbon dioxide, B. Ribulose 1,5-biphosphate, C. Sugar, D. Water? The correct answer is letter D. Water. Are you ready to answer? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items in what I know? Perfect! Let's see how you did. Go to page 17 to 19 of your module. Pause this video while you check. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect. That's alright. Let's do better next time. Let's have more activities that have something to do with our lesson today. Go to page 6 of your module, What's In. Complete the statements with the help of figures above and words in the box. Like in number 1. Blank is the path energy takes in the form of food going from one living thing to another. The correct answer is food chain. Are you ready to answer? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items in what's in? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 17 to 19 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. Are you ready for a challenge? Go to page 7, What's New? On your activity notebook, copy the puzzle below and circle the turns given which are found within the puzzle. Are you ready? Let's go! Are you able to answer the word search? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 17 to 19 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. So what are we going to be talking about today? That's right. We'll be talking about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process of food making done by plants and other autotrophic organisms. The presence of chlorophyll enables these organisms to make their own food. Autotrophic organisms require light energy, carbon dioxide, and water to make food. In plants, photosynthesis primarily takes place in the leaves, and little or none in the stems, depending on the presence of chlorophyll. The typical parts of the leaves include the upper and lower epidermis, mesophyll spongy layer, vascular bundles, and the stomata. 
The upper and lower epidermis protects the leaves and has nothing to do with the photosynthetic processes. Mesophyll has the most number of chloroplasts that contains chlorophyll. They are important in trapping light energy from the sun. Vascular bundles serve as transporting vessels of manufactured food and water. Carbon dioxide and oxygen were collected in the spongy layer and enters and exits the leaf through the stomata. The parts of a chloroplast include the outer and inner membranes, intermembrane space, stroma, and thylakoids stacked in grana. The chlorophyll is built into the membranes of the thylakoids. Chlorophyll absorbs white light, but it looks green because the white light consists of three primary colors, red, blue, and green. Only red and blue light is absorbed, thus making these colors unavailable to be seen by our eyes, while the green light is reflected, which makes the chlorophyll looks green. However, it is the energy from the red light and blue light that are absorbed and will be used in photosynthesis. The green light that we can see is not absorbed by the plants, and thus cannot be used to do photosynthesis. There are two stages of photosynthesis, the light-dependent reaction and the Calvin cycle or dark reaction. Light-dependent reaction happens in the presence of light. It occurs in the thylakoid membrane and converts light energy to chemical energy. Water, one of the raw materials of photosynthesis, is utilized during this stage and facilitates the formation of free electrons and oxygen. The energy harvested during the stage is stored in the form of ATP and NADPH. These products will be needed in the next stage to complete the photosynthetic process. Calvin cycle, or the dark reaction, is a light-independent phase that takes place in the stroma and converts carbon dioxide into sugar. This stage does not directly need light, but needs the product of light reaction. This is why it occurs immediately right after the light-dependent phase. Now watch this video to understand the light and dark reactions in photosynthesis. The leaves of this plant have cells that carry out photosynthesis. If we zoom in on this photosynthetic plant cell, we can see the chloroplast, where the reactions of photosynthesis occur. Photosynthesis consists of two primary steps, the light reactions and the Kelvin cycle reactions. In this tutorial, we'll focus exclusively on the light reactions. The light reactions occur within the thylakoid of the chloroplast. Here, Special pigments absorb light energy and transfer it to high-energy electrons, eventually producing ATP and the electron carrier NADPH. Let's zoom into the thylakoids to take a closer look at how ATP is created. The light reactions use two photosystems, called photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, which are both embedded in the thylakoid membrane. It's important to realize that these photosystems are named for the order in which they were discovered, not for the order in which they participate in the photosynthetic process. The light reactions actually begin at photosystem 2. The first thing that happens is that photosystem 2 receives photons, or light energy. This light energy is transferred to a chlorophyll reaction center, causing electrons in the reaction center to become energized. These electrons become so energized that they escape photosystem 2 and move to a nearby electron acceptor molecule located in the electron transport chain. Meanwhile, to replace the electrons leaving photosystem 2, water is split, releasing oxygen, two hydrogen ions, and two electrons. The first set of electrons continues to move down the electron transport chain, releasing stored energy as it moves. This energy is used to create a hydrogen ion gradient. A protein in the electron transport chain pumps hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid space. This creates
creates a high concentration of ions in the thylakoid space relative to the low concentration of ions in the stroma. This gradient contains a large amount of potential energy, which is used by an enzyme called ATP synthase. The hydrogen ions flow down their concentration gradient through a channel in ATP synthase, releasing energy in the process. ATP synthase uses this energy to add a phosphate to ADP, forming ATP. Let's zoom back out for a moment and return to our chloroplast. Remember from the beginning of this tutorial that the light reactions produce both ATP and NADPH. We've just seen how ATP is produced, but what about NADPH? Let's zoom back in to take a closer look. Notice these electrons over here where we left them at Photosystem 1. As Photosystem 1 absorbs additional light energy, the electrons again become energized, escaping Photosystem 1 and moving down the second electron transport chain. Electrons from the electron transport chain adjacent to photosystem 2 replace those in photosystem 1. And again, water is split to replace the electrons that have moved from photosystem 2. At the end of this electron transport chain, the energized electrons and a hydrogen molecule are used to reduce NADP to NADPH. Let's zoom back out to review. The light reactions use light energy and water to produce ATP and NADPH. Oxygen gas is released as a byproduct. Together, the ATP and NADPH formed during the light reactions are used by the Kelvin cycle reactions, which are discussed more in depth in a separate tutorial. The important thing to remember from this tutorial is that plants need both light and water to survive. Without these ingredients, the light reactions would shut down stalling photosynthesis and causing the plant to die. The leaves of this plant have cells that carry out photosynthesis. If we zoom in on this photosynthetic plant cell, we can see the chloroplast where the reactions of photosynthesis occur. Photosynthesis consists of two primary steps, the light reactions and the Kelvin cycle reactions. In this tutorial, we'll focus exclusively on the Kelvin cycle reactions. The overall purpose of the Kelvin cycle is to convert carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into carbohydrates, or sugars, which the plant needs to power its cellular activities and build new plant structures. The Kelvin cycle reactions occur within the stroma of the chloroplast. The reactions use the ATP and NADPH produced by the light reactions to convert the CO2 to carbohydrate. Let's zoom into the Kelvin cycle to take a closer look. The Kelvin cycle could be divided into three phases, carbon dioxide fixation, carbon dioxide reduction, and regeneration of RUBP. The first phase, carbon dioxide fixation, basically captures the CO2 from the atmosphere so it can be used in the reactions. To do this, CO2 is attached to RUBP, a 5-carbon molecule. The enzyme used in this reaction is called Rubisco, and the result of the reaction is an unstable 6-carbon molecule that quickly splits into two 3-carbon molecules called 3-phosphoglycerate, or 3PG. Next, the process of converting the CO2 to carbohydrate begins. This phase is called the carbon dioxide reduction phase because we're adding electrons and energy to the CO2 molecule. During this phase, a sequence of reactions uses NADPH and some of the ATP from the light reactions. These molecules supply the needed electrons and energy for CO2 reduction. Electrons are added from NADPH, and through a series of reactions, 3PG is reduced to form G3P, a carbohydrate. ADP and NADP plus return to the thylakoids to be converted back to ATP and NADPH by the light reactions. One of the G3P molecules is set aside to be used as a building block for glucose, but the majority of the G3P molecules move forward into the third phase of the Kelvin cycle. In this phase, ATP is used to combine the rest of the G3P molecules to form RUBP molecules. This RUBP can then combine with additional carbon dioxide molecules, continuing the carbon reactions. 
to form a glucose molecule, the cycle actually has to turn six times, because each turn of the cycle adds only one carbon atom from the incoming carbon dioxide. It's important to remember that the Calvin cycle is dependent on the light reactions to provide NADPH and ATP, which in turn provide the electrons and energy needed to form carbohydrates. Let's apply what you've just learned about photosynthesis. Go to page 9 to 10 and answer the enrichment activities. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Are you ready to answer? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items and what's more? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 17 to 19 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. Did you learn something? Go to page 11 and summarize what you've learned from the lesson and activities by completing the sentences using the words from the box. You can only use each word once. Write your answers in your activity notebook. Are you ready? Let's go! Were you able to answer all items in what I've learned? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 17 to 19 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. It's assessment time. Go to page 12 and answer the assessment. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write your answers on your activity notebook. Are you ready? Let's go! Were you able to answer all the items in the assessment? Great! Let's see how you did. Go to page 17 to 19 of your module. Pause this video while you check your work. Did you get a perfect score? Awesome! Almost perfect? That's alright. Let's do better next time. Congratulations! Now you know all about photosynthesis. Now you're all set for Module 7. Until next time, this is your teacher, Miss Robbie from Miss Robbie's Classroom. Happy studying, guys!